This video deals with hydrogen production and in particular the byproducts including aluminum hydroxide and aluminum oxide. The reaction is very simple. You just add water to aluminum and you produce hydrogen. Our idea is an improvement over that shown at the bottom of this page and that is start with water, add aluminum, but also add a catalyst to speed up that reaction thereby producing hydrogen at a higher rate still having a byproduct called aluminum hydroxide. The advantages of this process are that for every one aluminum of uh, one atom of aluminum you get three hydrogen atoms that's a pretty good uh, deal. Also in the bottom box you can see that the only fuels are just aluminum and water but three times more water molecules than aluminum atoms are involved in the consumption of fuel to produce hydrogen. So it's a pretty good deal in both ways to use this kind of chemistry to produce hydrogen. At the top is a balanced chemical equation that you've seen on the previous slide. A balanced chemical equation accounts for every single atom in every single molecule in the reaction of interest. The same chemical reaction is described below in equation 2. That's called an unbalanced chemical equation. And from here on we're going to be dealing mostly with this unbalanced chemical equation which is more straightforward and as you will see can contain more information to describe the entire process not just the dynamics of the chemical reaction to produce hydrogen. The imbalanced chemical equation just says add aluminum to water and catalytic carbon and what you get is catalytic carbon unmodified and aluminum hydroxide and hydrogen. The vertical arrow means that it goes off as a gas so it bubbles up and you can harvest it. The top equation is the same equation that was shown on the bottom of the previous page. The bottom equation is modified to actually include water. And the reason is, is that the whole entire reaction is done in a water environment. So even after the reaction products, as shown on the right side of equation 3, are obtained, it's still in a water bath. And so we add that in the unbalanced equation to provide more information about the whole entire system. The top equation is the same as was shown on the previous slide but now we're going to add something new to the reaction products and also to the reactants. That means the stuff on the right side of the arrow and the left side of the arrow in equation 4. And what we're going to add is aluminum oxide. We're going to assume that in the beginning we might have added some, added some aluminum oxide and as you will see later we might add some more and it will be used for good purpose. Now it's time to take a look at our entire equation, our chemical equation, and look at the inputs which are listed in blue and the outputs which are listed in red. Everything on the right side of the arrow on a chemical equation is the output or the products of that chemical reaction. So we see that the outputs contain catalytic carbon, aluminum oxide, aluminum hydroxide, water, and of course hydrogen bubbling up. That's what we want. The inputs to the cell now have been uh, modified to include the aluminum oxide, Al2O3. But big surprise, which is a nice surprise, and that is aluminum oxide is also a catalyst that splits water to release hydrogen. This is explained in uh, more technical detail in the link that I show at the very bottom of this page. We call that the ahu.pdf document. 
Now it turns out that the inputs to the cell are all solids except for the water. The water is liquid but everything else, the aluminum particles, the aluminum oxide, and the catalytic carbon are all solids. In other words, there's no gas vapor injected into the cell. That's good. The outputs from the cell now are also very desirable. Yes, we've got some water and of course that's going to remain in the cell as liquid. And for sure we're going to get hydrogen produced that will come off as bubbles. And those bubbles come up to the top of the liquid and escape then as in the form of a gas or a vapor and can be harvested, can be combusted, can be used, can be stored. But everything else will be solids in the output from the cell. And that is they're going to remain in the cell at the bottom of the cell at the bottom of the tank. And that's very good because our output in terms of gas vapor is pure hydrogen. In other words, there's no oxygen that escapes and is collected in our gas output. This is shown in more detail here where we make the explicit point that the oxygen remains in the cell. The oxygen is shown in the output from the cell as a green O. It remains in the cell as part of aluminum hydroxide, which is a solid in the bottom of the cell, and it remains as aluminum oxide, which is Al2O3, and that remains in the bottom of the cell. That's very good. We don't want any hydrogen to escape in the form of gas because we want pure hydrogen gas. This brings us to an important question. We've got all this aluminum hydroxide that's been produced as a result of creating hydrogen and generating hydrogen. Well, what are we going to do with it? And one answer, a very good answer is, let's just convert the aluminum hydroxide to aluminum oxide. It's easy to do. All you have to do is dry out the aluminum hydroxide and it will turn into aluminum oxide. The way to do that is just simply to apply some heat to everything that's left in the cell. So when you do cell maintenance, you just dry it out by applying some heat. And it turns out that what you will wind up with is not a mix of aluminum hydroxide and aluminum oxide. You'll wind up with just aluminum oxide after the whole entire contents of the cell are dried out during some maintenance process. You'll have catalytic carbon there as well, but that's good. We can harvest the aluminum oxide and use it for two purposes. As noted on the bottom of the chart, one purpose is it's a valuable catalyst. So we can return some of it back to the cell to aid the catalytic carbon in the catalysis process that's going to split water and produce the hydrogen that we want. This diagram is the most important diagram in this whole entire video. It shows the whole entire cycle. The top part shows what happens when we're producing hydrogen, and the bottom part shows what happens when we're doing maintenance and harvesting the aluminum oxide for use either as, for example, an abrasive material, it's the world's most used abrasive material, or we can return some of it back to our cell to aid the catalytic carbon in the role of being a catalyst to split the water and produce hydrogen. This is the most important and most comprehensive system description in terms of chemical equations that can be done to produce the CCHOD process or describe that process and explain how hydrogen can be produced and how the byproducts can be disposed of or treated or used. It's easy to verify that uh, hydrogen is produced by this process. 
you can just take a small plastic tube and make a bubbler out of a cup of water and when the hydrogen bubbles come up you can use a a flame coming from a fireplace lighter to light the bubbles. Make sure that you keep the Tigon tubing below the water surface because you don't want a flashback which means that the flame could travel back down the hose and to your cell. So you don't want a hydrogen explosion even if it's a small one. So make sure that the the Tigon tubing stays below the surface of the water and you'll probably be okay. Well, can this method be scaled up? Can it be more than just a few bubbles in a cup? And the answer is yes, it can. And uh, there's another file online which we call the su.pdf document which gives all the fundamental chemistry and also scale-up calculations. So this shows what happens if you burn the aluminum at a given rate. If you burn it at about 0.67 grams per minute, which is uh, less than a teaspoon a minute, you can produce hydrogen at the rate of about one liter per minute. On the other hand, if you consumed it at the rate of 43 grams per minute, I mean by that consuming aluminum at 43 grams per minute, you could in fact produce hydrogen to the tune of about 64 liters a minute. This uh, scale-up process continues without adding additional heat to the process. So it's unlike electrolysis. With electrolysis, you want more hydrogen, you got to put more current and more power into the process. Here that's not true. If you want more hydrogen, you just add more aluminum surface area and more water and you can get more hydrogen without putting any more power into the process. Important information. So no energy input is needed after the water is warmed up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want more information, there is a lot of information on our website that has to do with hydrogen and here are the URLs that you may be interested in looking at. If you need more information, you can send us an email at hp at valiant.net or you can give us a call if you need to at the phone number in the lower right hand corner of this card.